I'm getting an error in my terminal and I just don't know how to fix it. Uh, here, let me take a look. I think I might know what the problem is. How can you be so sure? Well, most issues that people face in the command line usually fall within eight main categories. What eight categories? Well... Number one, neglecting to update your packages. So failing to update your packages can have a lot of consequences. For example, compatibility issues with other components in your system. So imagine your code needing certain logic to run, but that logic doesn't exist in an older version of your package. Missing bug fixes. So by not updating, you may continue to experience bugs that have already been resolved in newer versions or just lack of new features. You might be missing new functionality and optimizations that the engineers behind the software have already worked hard to add. Here's how you're going to avoid this mistake. Take whatever package manager you prefer, whether that be Homebrew, NPM, APT, Chocolatey, or something else. I work on the Mac OS, so my personal preference is Homebrew. On Homebrew, I'm going to run this command, brew outdated, which will output a list of all of my outdated packages. Then I can run brew upgrade that will upgrade all of my packages, or I can even add an argument for the specific package to upgrade. Oh, I always saw those error messages, but I never knew how to fix them. This is super useful. Keep going. Okay, sure. Failing to back up data. When doing certain tasks, you could be in the danger of deleting really important files. For example, an operating system upgrade gone wrong, performing a disk cleanup to free up space on your machine, a data migration, organizing your file structure, or even just experimenting with new software or configurations that might affect important files. It's always better to be safe than sorry, so here's how to back up your data using the command line. First, you want to create a backup directory by running mkdir backup. Then you're going to want to copy a file to that directory by running this command. Or if you want to copy over an entire directory, you can run this command instead. Or if you want to copy data to a remote server using SSH, then you can use this command. And after doing that, I would recommend you run this diff command to double check that you've successfully backed up all of your data. So this is just going to make sure that the file that you backed up and the original file are identical. And since we're already on the topic of accidentally deleting all of your data, here's another common error you might run into, unintentionally overwriting your files. So this is a simple but common mistake that you're probably going to want to know now. This command will append text to the end of your file and notice how it has two arrows. Now this command will actually replace the text in file two with the text in file one and notice how this only has one arrow. So you see how easy it might be to accidentally delete data just by dropping an arrow from your command. The same things with commands like MV which moves files or CP which copies files from one location to another can overwrite files without confirmation, leading to a lot of data loss. I mean, I personally prefer using my file explorer GUI to help me move files or copy over directories, but I could see this being useful for trying a command that a coworker gave me or just copying something off of Stack Overflow. Yeah, that's a totally fair observation. Number four, using sudo too often. sudo is a command that lets you execute other commands as a root user or a super user. This can be really helpful if you need elevated permissions to complete a task, but it can also be quite dangerous. Using sudo too often can lead to accidentally modifying or deleting important file systems or even compromising compromising the security of your system. To avoid this mistake, make sure to only use sudo when absolutely necessary and be sure to double check the command you're running before executing it with sudo. Yeah, 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 I already knew this one. Come on, teach me something more interesting. Okay, fine. The next three I'm about to give you might seem a little bit obvious, but I still see people mess up with them all the time. Not knowing how to use options or flags. Hey, this command doesn't do what Google says it does. I felt this way a lot when I first started using the terminal. If you can relate, it's very likely likely that you're using the right commands, but not the right flags. So for example, let's say I wanted to use the grep command to search for the word Jess in my to-do list.txt. I can run this command, but it doesn't return anything, which seems wrong because I literally can see the word Jess in my file. To fix this, I can type grep Jess dash and then press tab to see what option flags I have available to me. If I scroll down, I can see that this dash I option will make the output case insensitive. Now, when I run the command, 
grep dash i to do list.txt, the output seems to make a lot more sense now. All right, what else you got? Six, not using git commands correctly. Most of us tend to use git as part of our daily workflow, but actually I feel like a lot of developers tend to make very common mistakes with git. For example, git push with the force flag overwrites the branch history, potentially causing conflicts for other team members. I actually knew somebody who used to git push with the force flag in their company code base by default, which is a huge no-no. Totally not me, I swear. Another really misused git command is git rebase, which integrates changes from one branch to another, but it can go very wrong if you don't use it correctly. For example, you might run into error messages like these. I won't read through all the reasons and fixes behind these errors, but feel free to pause the video and read the screen before moving on. And number seven, mistyping your file paths. This one might seem like common sense, but I see people messing up on this all the time. For example, I might type in the command cd warp media, but I'll get this error because I can't just type in the directory like this. Instead, I need to type it in with slashes like so to signify that I have a space in my directory name. Error messages like these are common ones you might get when you mistype a file path. I've included more specific details here around what your mistake could have been to cause this error, so make sure to give it a quick read through so next time you see this error, you can more quickly identify what's going on. All right, these are all great tips you're giving me, but none of these tips are gonna help me debug this error I'm seeing right now. How do I debug this? Ah, uh, young Padawan, patience. I have saved the best for last. Luckily, you live in an era of artificial intelligence where there are now tools that have AI built into the command line to make debugging errors a lot easier. So my last tip, number eight, is not knowing how to use AI to debug error output. We all know that getting that red wall of error text sucks. A lot of people tend to panic and waste a lot of time Googling things or entering potentially dangerous commands into their computer to try to fix it. I think this is where AI can come in really useful. In the past year, there are tools now like Fig AI, Copilot CLI, and Warp AI that have AI built into the terminal. For example, with this error here, I can paste the entire error output into Warp AI, and it will actually generate for me code snippets, packages to install, and step-by-step -step instructions of what I need to run to bypass this error. Look, your error is fixed now. Dang, that's awesome. Thanks for helping out. Yeah, no problem.